Welcome back everyone, my name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our Let's Play of Pathfinder Kingmaker where we left off last time. We were on our way back from a forest killing our territory and also just exploring some zones. I realized we did succeed at our last check, so that was good. Even when we succeeded, we took massive losses, so it wasn't the best situation, but at least we succeeded and it's not a problem anymore. We have a couple of throne room things to deal with though, and then we'll head off to tax, I think. That's our goal. Remember those books from Maestro Janusha's study? We hope to find something about our past in them. Well, we did, and I'm kind of sorry we looked. We actually found something, but it's a sensitive conversation. We'll wait for you in the palace garden near the viewing point. Why couldn't- it's just- I, I can send everyone out of the throne room. It's- oh, okay, fine, whatever. Tristan ran silent for a long time. When he finally opens his mouth, his voice is hoarse and tired. I won't take much of your time, Jade Maul. I've been meaning to ask you about something. This might seem stupid or arrogant or insolent. Christian stumbles and catches his breath. I want to talk to you. I think you know what it's about. It's... It's what I've done, and what I haven't done. The priest lowers his head and grows quiet. But let's speak in private, far from curious ears. I'll be at the viewing point in the palace garden. Please come as soon as you can. Why do you... Why does everyone want to meet me in the... Viewing point? I won't. All right, well, we'll go to the viewing point in the palace gardens and see what they have to say for themselves. And then we have to go to Patax at some point. Where is the viewing point? Must be just that overlook area, I think. I require rest. You're fine. Alright, so, first group, I guess, is over here. I won't be halted. Not very secretive area. Octavia pensively fiddles with a small metal trinket while she waits. It takes her a moment to notice you as you approach. Oh, hi. It seems we haven't been properly introduced. Allow me, Octavia del Fiorni, heir to a noble title, a family manor, even a coat of arms with a motto. With a sad smile, Octavia shows you the trinket she was playing with. It's a fibula, decorated with a coat of arms, a butterfly, and an arrow. At the bottom you see the motto, Serve solely my conscience. Do you know where to find your family? There isn't one, really. The della fin Hyun. Piorni family was waiting before I was born. My mother's the last one. She's living in Patax, in a small house. I'm going to pay her a visit, and I'd like you to accompany me. What about Orgongar? Yes, but he'll tell you everything himself. So you're... Well... As you wish, Your Excellency. It would be an honor to serve you on this excursion. Octavia looks at you, confusion written on her face. At first she seems a little offended, but a moment later she's bent half in half of the laughter. Excellency, oh, I can't, my excellency, a high-born marchioness of the highest rank. Whew, Octavia wipes tears away from her eyes. Don't make me laugh so hard, just look at me. Devils take me, what kind of marchioness am I? You don't think I'm going to tax to inherit a title, do you? But thank you anyway, the title's not important, I just want to see my mother. Gogger stands beneath the tree, gloomily looking down on the city below. Ah, oh, there you are. Well, we found my tribe. Now we just have to go have ourselves a friendly chat. The half-orc clenches his fists. And... What about Octavia? Did you learn anything about her family? We did. Turns out she's no... Stop, no, I'm shutting up. That's her news to tell you. So who's your tribe? The sewer rats. Wait, no, that's it. The crab lice? The threadbare moles? Man, I just can't seem to remember. Oh, right, the dung pigs. The half-orc gives you a lopsided grin. Fine, fine, they call themselves the sharp fangs, and for good reason. Regongar grins, displaying the tis teeth. Smaller than an orc's, but still large and sharp. They have kids with orcs to strengthen their blood. Not bad, huh? They breed themselves like pedigree cattle. So, I've really been sold twice. First by my orc so of a mother, who took some gold to push me and my brother out, never to see us again. Then my father chose which of us to keep and which to sell to the slavers. We did like an animal my whole life. I'm surprised I'm not barking on all fours. You don't bark, though. You go straight for the throat. Everyone who helped me do an animal will, will regret it bitterly. 
A cruel smirk plays across Regongra's face, that's for sure. Hmm, <laughs> right, that scum will get what they deserve. Alright, let's go meet your tribe. So, we're bringing a lot of NPCs along, apparently, to the Pataxian lands. We're very far from a level. Christian, this is not any more private than the other area. You've come. Christian tilts his head to the side and remains silent. You notice he's holding something in his hands. It's so strange. I don't know if I should be glad or frightened. Anyway, thank you for finding some time for me. Christian turns his head. If it weren't for his blind eyes, you would imagine he's looking into the distance. Since you freed me from Nerissa's power, I've had time to think about what happened to me and what Nerissa did to me, what she truly did. When I found myself here without my wings in a mortal body, I was terrified. One sec. Sorry about that, thought I heard a knock at the door, and I believed everything she told me, for I believed it was she who had stolen my freedom. At last I discovered that Nerissa had lied to me, and ever since I've sought a way to regain Saren Ray's gifts. And do you know what I realized? No one is capable of taking the diva's gifts granted by his creator. Kristen's voice is barely audible. No one except for the Dawnflower herself. So you were made mortal by Saren Ray? He nods. I found no other explanation for what happened to me. Nerissa's power is great, but not so great as to turn angels into mortals. I wanted to know if the way back to Saren Ray is open for me. I spent endless hours in prayer, asking... For but one thing, a sign, a vision, a portent, a single word, and all I got in return was silence. Kristen smiles crookedly, hiding a grieving grimace. I wanted so badly to do something extraordinary, and it appears that I succeeded. I fell so low that even my most merciful lady couldn't forgive me for my sins. But she grants you spells. Yes, perhaps this weak hope is the only thing that keeps me from losing my mind to despair. Or is this meager pittance but an eternal reminder of what I've lost? No. My merciful lady may be strict, but she's not capable of such an unforgiving sanction. Anyway, I didn't ask you to come listen to me whining. I did not wish that my mortal deeds will end in deception and betrayal. It has cost me so much. I wish to put an end to at least one evil that Nurse has spawned, and I'm asking for your help. So he straightened himself, showed me his hands. There's a crumpled leaflet, one of the invitations for the Kingdom of the Cleanse. Maybe you can finally tell me who this first faithful is, and what is the Kingdom of the Cleanse? I only know what I could overhear, or what Nerissa boasted to me. The one called the First Faithful is a former priest of Arastal named Ruthgert. When the Bloom came to his village, he lost his faith. Arastal didn't protect his congregation, and Ruthgert was stripped of his position. After this, he set off for the Temple of the Elk to pray to his god one last time, and if he didn't answer, to throw curses in the face of his idol. Like so many others, Ruthgert was fooled by Nerissa. She pretended to be the goddess of these lands, told Ruthgert of the curse of the king, and promised him untold gifts in return for the death of this ruler. It was she who invented the name of this new cult, devoted to herself, and made Ruthgert its high priest. She knew just how to flatter him. In his moment of weakness and despair, and he in turn did everything he could to draw his former con congregation into this vile cult. Where do we start? I knew I could trust you and ask for your help, thank you. I've heard that the cultists of the kingdom have been sighted once again, but now they no longer shout their slogans in bright day. Broad day. No, they crawl from their lairs under the cover of darkness to abduct people for sacrifice. At least that's what's being said. We should return to their temple without walls, where they once held their rituals. Of course, the First Faithful is not so foolish as to return to the scene of his crimes, but perhaps another one of the cleansed has visited this meeting place. Held rituals, remember the past, gods know what else. If we're lucky, we might find something there. So many people want to do many different things. We should probably get on that, but first we're gonna go claim a zone. I think we have enough BP to claim the dire gnarl marches, and maybe enough to build a city. So we'll take a quick look at that, and then we'll get on our way. Very long loading screen again. I require rest. We should also probably rest before we go. I think we've been exhausted or fatigued for a while. It's fine though. No big deal. How much BP do we have? We don't have very much left, I don't think. Maybe enough to claim the dire neural marches and 
build a settlement, and I think that's going to be about it, in all honesty. We met Dragongar and Octavia, and we did Tristan's thing. Any other weird events? The Rushlight Tournament, right. We have to go do the challenges. We have 595 EP. We have 278 economy? That's actually pretty damn good. Hmm. Anyways, regions. How much does it cost? Okay, we can do that. Uh, Keston can help us with it. It's gonna take 14 days. Let's save in case things blow up while we do this. I tire. Okay, that is good. I also took Glenshire earlier, so I built a settlement there. It's the same as all of our other settlements, really. Okay. Events. Oh, that's really bad. Oh, the divine stability. Oh, we have 19 stability left. Super. We failed to do runaways. We triumphed in the fire. That's good. We succeeded in selling the soul jars and got 250 BP. We have another visitor in the castle. We have the Test of Steel. Another Sword Lord tournament is about to be held in Mivon. The competition will determine each participant's social status and their influence in Mivon. A young and ambitious warrior asks that she be trained by servants of the king. Or why not? 28, DC 27. Yeah, that's fine. Protector of the Weak Harem, go do that. That's some divine stuff. Mental Dexterity is going to be... Arcane? Yeah. Forest for the Elves. We need more stability. So this is stability. DC 24. We should be able to do that. Disrupted Harmony. Can't do that. We're busy. We have to go to the tournament. And we have a person. And what are our projects currently? Aggressive Expansion. We can reduce the time to claim territory. Wait, is this the thing we actually have to stick around for? I'm going to save before we do this. Okay. Good, we didn't have to actually stick around for it. Um, what else can we do? He's busy, he's busy. He is not busy. That's not a great one, though. This is a lot of BP for unrest. Although we're always at unrest, so maybe that would be worthwhile. Actually, improving economic status. No, it's just stuff. They're busy. He's busy with that. Let's see with that. Support the treasurer's endeavors. That takes 14 days. Grand diplomat, also 14 days. I guess we have no real projects we can do at the moment. Any events sitting around that we can send people on? We already have someone on that. Alright. That's it then. Oh, I like how our stability is so terribly low. The attacks on your kingdom grow more and more brutal and increasingly harder to repel. Fortunately, we stood our ground again, but will we be able to keep up? No. Lindsay gives Tristan an oddly serious look. It was you who was behind all the attacks, it wasn't it. But why? Tristan drops his head limply. Yes, at least to a certain extent, my lady. Tristan's curve, lips curve scornfully. Nerissa ordered me to open the way for the creatures from the first world. I've often traveled between worlds, so it was not a difficult thing to do. Galarian is closely connected to the first world. Spontaneous portals between the two worlds are not uncommon. All I did was give one such portal some extra stability. Once every few months it opened wide enough to allow Nerissa's creatures to come charging through. What I did was terrible, people were dying all the time because of me and I could do nothing but warn them of the next attack. I mourn the losses every day. My only hope is that one day I'll be able to make up for these evil acts. You better work hard to atone for your mistakes, Tristan, unless you want to beg for my executioner's forgiveness. He turns even paler, but answers with a determined nod. We must prepare for Nerissa's next attack. 
we will prepare well, just let her try and come at us again, we'll beat her back to where she came from. I'll cap our victory by writing a song about her, a really funny and embarrassing one, everyone in the first world will be singing it for her. That was a lot of people all in one go. Three. Is that it? Everyone's good? Alright, now we have to go to Patax. And I'm gonna pause here for one minute. I'll be back shortly. Alright, we are back almost to the Sharp Bangs Tribal Camp. We brought Ragongar and all of the people along with us. We're not gonna do any of the optional areas because our group is severely gimped with only three of our actual real group members here. The other ones don't even have equipment. They're mostly just here as filler and to do their storyline parts before being relegated back to the back of the pile. Uh, well, this is I won't be halted. a little more bleak than I was anticipating. Good thing we have two clerics here. I wasn't expecting a whole bunch of corpses. Hi. Ingid, son of Shatara. In the dry grass, you can barely make out signs that people once lived here. Burned bits of tents, rusted swords, rain washed bones. An old half orc is the only living soul among the desolation. Wrapped in a shard mantle, he sits on the ground, devouring a raw rabbit, tossing the bones to a dog lying at his feet. He squints as you approach, but doesn't reach for any weapons. Hmm? Who's there? No one comes by here anymore. I'm Ragongar, a son of the Sharp Bangs tribe, and they sold me into slavery. Where are the Sharp Bangs? You're looking at them. The old man points to the bones scattered along the ground. All there, elders of children. Just me left of the Sharp Bangs. Well, me and you. What happened to them? Dead, all dead. Chieftain's son destroyed them. See, Chieftain. Agden, may he feast eternally with Gorum, didn't want anyone else's kid to become chieftain after him, so he needed an heir with incredible power. That's why he chose Gra the Dragon Eye to bear his children. She was a mighty orc, a warrior who scorched her enemies with lightning. Boasted of having dragons in her family, she demanded a lot of gold for it, but she delivered more than she promised. She had not one child, but twins. Agden thought a while on what to do, then wisely decided that a tribe doesn't need two chieftains, sold the weaker one to someone from the city to get back some of the gold he had spent. Started raising the second one, Stragar, to be our new chieftain. The boy was alright, deft, cunning, strong, and he knew how to use dragon charms. He struck an elf with lightning from his hands when he was knee-high. But there must have been too much orc and dragon blood in him, and too little human. The older he got, the more, well, you know. The old man knocks on his head with the bony knuckle. Had a temper like a dragon, if something went wrong, he'd start fighting right off. Couldn't tell his tribe spoke from other strangers and would shoot lightning at the tiniest provocation. Was always cocky with his father too, called him names, screaming about how the chieftain sold his brother, saying he'd look for him and return him to the tribe. In a word, crazy. Anyone else would have been happy that the chieftain's mantle, the one I wear now, <laughs> anyone else would have been happy getting the mantle, especially with no rivals for it, but he was stubborn. Wanted his brother back no matter what. Then one time, Agden grew tired of Strygar's whims, decided to teach him a lesson as a father does, knocked him a couple times with a long rod, and that was it. The boy screamed like the hells and his eyes flared blue, started shooting lightning all around, it was terrifying. I still see it in my sleep, flames, smoke, lightning everywhere, tents burning one after another. I was too old to fight, so I hid behind a hillock and stayed out of the way. Some of the others, they went at him with swords, and they all died, no one survived, even the little ones were burned alive. He took as good as he gave though, died of wounds soon after, and that was the end of the sharp fangs. Gunger looks at the bones scattered in the grass baffled, brother. He sounds like a nice guy, best in his tribe, a lot like you. Wish I could have met him. <laughs> me too. What do you say, Ragongar? Well, what is there to say? Why'd you put your sword away? Ragongar severs the old man's head with a single slash of his sword, taking the charred mantle from the body and draping it about his own shoulders. Live like blind rats in a sewer, die the same way. The whole story is one long, feeble joke. I'd piss on their bones if I cared enough. We should have never come here. Let's go home. Bapor turns and walks away from the burn settlement without looking at anyone. He left the group? You idiot, you made me medium encumbered because of that. We do it my way. I hate the NPCs. No, I'm just kidding, they're not all bad. Actually, I kinda like Vergongar. If he didn't just leave my group and to ruin my encumbrance level. What a jerk. Well, at least we succeeded in that quest. Octavia's is in Patax, 
and Tristian's. What was Tristian's again? He wanted something. I brought him along for a reason. I think he had to go to Patax as well. We'll look it up. It's gotta be in our journal. It's under probably companion quests. Yep. Knock knock. We need to do at some point to you, Highborn at Heart. No, that's Octavia's. Oh, right. Christian wanted to be back at the other place. It's Lindsay that wanted to come to Patax. Well, we'll just call for Lindsay when we get there. Oh, good, he rejoined the group, apparently. There's an exclamation mark on our kingdom thing, which makes me worried. What terrible circumstance is happening in our capital now? Okay. Oh, nothing, okay. Ooh. Feels good when nothing dire is happening. 11 days, 11 days, 11 days, so we have three 11 day things, one 4 day thing, one 26 day thing, and another 11 day thing. Okay, ignoring the kingdom for now, we have 11 days to do fun stuff before more bad things happen. Tristian's gonna get kicked out of the group, we're gonna grab Lindsay, we're also gonna get rid of Bergongar, and we'll bring along two normal, one normal person. No, two normal people. It'll just be Octavia and Lindsay as our special people. Special guests, really. We're gonna come do all these things later. There are a lot of them. Including the mysterious shrines. Uh, I don't really want to fight with this group. If we can help it. Good. Nobody catches their breath until we Arrest would be welcome. are totally fatigued. I think that's where we need to go. How do we get there? Fine, we'll rest. Hooray, everything worked out. Maybe we have to go around the lake. It's definitely not on this side. Although maybe we could go down to the road and then back up. That might be better. And then we go across, and then... Oh, this is Patax. It's actually the city itself. Huh. Uh, Alright, we're gonna summon our group members, our actual ones. So we're gonna get rid of for Gongar. We'll keep Octavia. Get rid of Tristan. Bring Lindsay. And we'll bring along our mage. I think no. We have a mage, kinda. It's our barbarian, there she is. That's what I could be here. I want her to be in the right spot in the group. That'll do. That took a couple days, I'm sure. Quick saving and to the fields where the tournaments take place. I wonder what they're going to be all about. Something interesting, no doubt. King Erebedi greets you personally. The bulky Kellid is broad-shouldered and looks to be somewhere around 50 years of age. His golden crown sits on long, greasy hair above a heavily powdered face covered in bristle, and his expensive doublet is stained with oily spots. He guffaws as he squeezes you in a bear hug, enveloping you 
in the scent or mixed scent of sweat, wine, and expensive perfume. Well, my crown bearing brother, welcome to my home. Stuff yourself, drink, be my guest. You've proven yourself in combat as well as affairs of state. Let's see how you do at having fun. I'm happy to meet you too. It's no good for kings and queens to stay in our palaces all the time. We need to meet, be friends with one another. It's all about keeping up neighborly relations, you know. So here's the plan. First, the fish is triathlon. Then, a boasting contest. And in the evening, the best part, <laughs> a drunken melee. In the interim, there'll be a buffet, a fair, jugglers, acrobats, all the usual entertainment. And after the melee, I'll announce the winner. And then we'll have a festive banquet and a fireworks show. <laughs> then we just drink till morning or find a tent to crawl into. Your own or someone else's, depending on your luck. By the way... A knockout such as yourself will always be welcome in my tent. Uh, <laughs> just joking. Just a joke. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. I'll have to seal your sheath. This is a peaceful celebration, after all, and bullies will be kicked out immediately. It doesn't matter if it's a king who decided to kick up a row or just a shopkeeper. So behave yourself and don't start any fights while you're here. Got it. Well, I have to go. If you need anything, talk to Nunzio Arpaia. He is my master of ceremonies. So he's responsible for organizing this mess. <laughs> have fun. Okay. So our, she our sheaths are sealed, but I mean, we have spells. I won't be halted. There's a trader here. Do you have any good stuff? How much money do we have? 120,000. Ooh. Oh my. An Earthbreaker plus four, you say? Until that person gives us an Earthbreaker in our capital, I'm going to take one of those. For good measure. A tower shield plus four too. Adamantine full plate plus four. I'll take that. And in the normal full plate plus four for our other character, we're gonna be dead broke, like a hundred percent broke after this. Luckily, we have things to sell. We too have things to sell back to you. I actually really kind of like that robe. I'm not sure if I want to sell it yet. Keeping that vest. We don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need any of those daggers. Don't need the Chill Midnight or the Falcata plus one or the Heavy Crossbow plus one. We don't need Edict even though it's kind of nice. A decent dagger, but... We have a lot of Rings of Protection. Sell. And we have just all of the Belts of Giant Strength apparently. Keep one. The rest can be sold. Plus two wisdom isn't all that much. Although we could use one, I think. We have a professor sat, which we are going to use. I just don't know if I'm putting it on quite yet. Don't need that amulet. Don't need any of these. Or those, for that matter. The plus three ones we may need. The cloak of sold souls is an artifact we picked up, but it's not the best. It's sort of just okay. We've almost paid for our gear that we're buying. All of this junk. There we go. Oh wait, hang on. Those are not what I thought they were. Those are charred mantles. Keep one of those. Actually, no, we won't. We don't need them. They're not super important. Uh, natural armor plus one. Gone. Keep the Heart of Era. I still don't know what to do with that broken thing. Keeping all that, and then we'll just... Offer those things. There we go, we made 500 bucks, 600 bucks on that deal. So we do have this 
half plate of hatred, but the adamantine full plate is going to be considerably better. Oh, it looks amazing. Look at that. I gotta say, their artist textures look did a good job on that one. That looks amazing. Earthbreaker plus four. Doesn't look particularly impressive, but gives us some more to hit. And more damage. So, our other person that's getting full plate is going to be her. Doesn't look as cool, but it's good nonetheless. Our dwarven friend is going to pick up one of these plates. Actually, I think his other armor is better. Like, quite a bit. Alright, we'll sell our half plate of hatred then, though we can't because they're both worth zero dollars. I guess. Alright. I think our character looks really cool now. Alrighty, where are we off to now? Actually, we're kind of we closing in on mind. the end of the video in terms of time. I also need to restart my computer because I think there's a memory leak. I am starting to lag pretty hard. Karn Vareel, who are you? The gnome's yellow bloodshot eyes scan the faces in the room nervously. Noticing you, he grabs for his sealed sheath. What? Who are you? Oh, it's your royal highness. Forgive me, I didn't recognize you. An honor, truly a huge honor. I'm Karn Vareel, a simple salesman. What do you sell? What do you care? Fish and the like. Who might you recommend I meet here? No one, everyone. How should I know? I'm just a simple salesman. Leave me to be. I've heard a few curious words. Bloodbrush extract. And that you're no ordinary salesman. And that your wares are five, or far from mundane. Quiet, quiet, I say, gripping his sheath tightly. The gnome looks around anxiously before whispering. Too many people here, too many eyes. You want to talk business? Find me on Patax. I'll, I'll remember you. Who are you? I told you already, the gnome's voice rises in anger. I'm a simple salesman, not rich, not noble. Why would a king concern himself with me? He wouldn't. Alright, bye. Oh, we have one more person to talk to. That is a big dude. Did he punch me? A young man staggers towards you, his expensive doublet wet with wine. As he passes, he brushes shoulders with you and starts yelling. His breath rank with alcohol. Watch yourself! Who do you think you are, pig? You tramped on my foot and ruined my doublet. I'm gonna- I demand satisfaction. Best not angry me. I put away more people and monsters than you have bottles over the course of your waste of a life. Get out of here while you still can. I- uh, sorry. Think I- it confused you for someone else. Sorry, my mistake. These things happen. Apologies. Alright, we're gonna call it here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Others will see you next time.